Receiving incoming transmission. This is Idaho calling. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Russ Belvel. I drove here seven hours from Portland, Oregon to be a part of this press conference, and I figure we'll just go ahead and get started right now. Uh, we are here because of these two fine people, Josh and Lindsay Reinhardt, as well as Sarah Caldwell, otherwise known as the Idaho Three. I'd like to give them all a chance to speak to you themselves, and then I have a few remarks as well as, is Sarah gonna speak too? We may have a few people to speak, but we'll start with uh, Lindsay and Josh. Hi, it has been alleged that my children have been removed from my house due to being an imminent danger due to cannabis being present in our household. I am the chief petitioner and executive director of Compassionate Idaho. We are trying to legalize medical marijuana in our state. If we had medical marijuana in our state, this would have not been something that our children could have been affected by. Um, we have worked very hard to change these laws in Idaho to protect people from what is exactly happening to us. Um, we're challenging the imminent danger due to the fact that cannabis is a non-toxic substance. Therefore, how could a child be in imminent danger due to its presence? Um, and that is why our children were removed and we feel that we have been targeted in some way, shape, or form for trying to legalize medical cannabis in our state due to the charges that are pending. Um, we have not been charged with anything as of this time. We have not been charged with trafficking. We have not been charged with possession. We have not been charged with growing. We have not been charged with most, like, with anything. Um, we are trying our best to make sure that everybody understands in Idaho that this is an education campaign. Um, we're not trying to cause problems with CPS. In fact, our worker has been very kind to us. And we get a visit um, tomorrow with our children where they get to see their dogs and we're very happy. And the foster family has also been very kind. The, the thing that we're taking issue with is that the imminent danger part. Um, because cannabis is a non-toxic substance, we feel it's important to educate people that imminent danger and cannabis do not go together and with a responsible parent and being a patient should not make you a criminal. I am a multiple sclerosis patient. The reason I had cannabis in my household was due to the fact that I'm a multiple sclerosis patient. Um, I have to use it to treat my multiple sclerosis. Now that they have confiscated the cannabis and my children, um, I will no longer be using cannabis to treat my multiple sclerosis while I'm in the state, um, which is very unfortunate because now I will have to go on a toxic stew of all sorts of medications that I was able to get off of while treating with cannabis or greatly reduce my consumption of while taking cannabis. So over the extended amount of time while we are trying to get our children back and then whatever criminal proceedings may follow due to the cannabis being found in our house, um, you will all see the difference that cannabis makes in my life. If you start looking at pictures on my Facebook profile from 2011, you can see the difference. I had a sagging eyebrow. I had a sagging lip. I started using cannabis to treat my condition. And my eyebrow doesn't sag anymore and my lip doesn't sag anymore. I have not been able to consume cannabis since they took my children and I'm already getting sick again. Multiple sclerosis has many symptoms as it affects the central nervous system. And right now, my symptoms are that my skin is starting to burn, which is one of the most unpleasant things that you can possibly feel in the world. It is like being drugged down a hot road by a semi-truck. It is excruciating. And it's just starting. Um, there's a band of pressure that is coming along 
um, around my waist, which is also very painful. And more specifically, muscle spasms um, and multiple sclerosis patients are very effectively treated with cannabis. And due to not having cannabis, my muscle spasms have returned and they are lengthened and they are painful and there's nothing I can do about them unless I choose to take a pharmaceutical drug. Um, I have to cooperate fully with CPS. We are no longer having cannabis in our house. We are doing everything we can to get our children home um, because nothing is more important than your children, which is why we've been fighting so hard in this state to make it safe for patients to have medical marijuana so that their kids didn't get taken away. And it happened to us and we were the ones fighting. And we need everybody in this state to grab a petition and get signatures because no family deserves to be torn apart over a non-toxic substance that a medical patient is using to treat an illness. This isn't something that was, a, was some hard drug in our house. This isn't something that was there that could hurt our children. This was something that was there because I am sick. Our children knew it was medicine. They knew to stay out of it just like any other drug, any other cough medicine. If there was, they know not to use tobacco. They know not to use alcohol. They know not to use, you know, any medication at all. They knew not to use mother's cannabis. They know that they're not an imminent danger. Um, and so with that being said, I cannot treat using cannabis any longer while I am in this state. So I will be doing regular reports so that everybody can see um, my health decline so that people can see how important cannabis is to my health. Also, um, the Idaho State Repository is a very useful tool. Um, we're one of four states that has one. I am encouraging everybody to look me up on the repository. My name is Lindsay Reinhart. My birthday is 8182. I am not a criminal. I have two parking tickets from 2003. That is my record. I am not a criminal. I am a patient that needs medicine who did not deserve to have my children taken away from my home and placed in foster care where there is nothing I can do about it. Now again, CPS has been very kind to us and so has the foster parents. They're cooperating, we're cooperating, and we hope to get our children back soon. But in the meantime, as an activist for cannabis, we feel the need to point out that cannabis is a non-toxic substance that I, as a patient, need. And without that distinction, this could be something that is much different. So we need to make sure that it is clear that I am a patient and not a criminal, and that my children were not in danger by having a non-toxic substance in my house. How many people keep beer in their refrigerator and can open it up and those children can get in there and they can drink that beer? How many people have different prescription bottles that they don't close properly that their children can get into? How many people have herbal supplements, iron perhaps, that your child could eat too much of and get sick from? There are all sorts of different substances that are much more harmful when, than cannabis because cannabis doesn't have a harmful rate. It is non-toxic. Nobody has ever died from cannabis. You would have to consume 1,500 cannabis cigarettes in order to, in 15 minutes, in order to OD from cannabis. And that would be not from cannabis, but from suffocation due to lack of oxygen. So there's no reason to remove a child from a home where a patient is using cannabis responsibly. Um, we cannot let this continue. And this is why we fight. And this is why we fought so hard for two and a half years is because we did not want this to happen to families. Families don't deserve this. This is harmful to our children to be placed with strangers. It's been harmful and hard for us because our babies aren't in our house. Our dogs are depressed because they don't have their boys over a non-toxic substance that I needed as a patient. We shouldn't have to go through this and no other family in this state should have to go through this. If you are a patient using a non-toxic medication, you should not have to go through this. You should not have your children taken away for having cannabis in your home. It is a non-toxic substance that does not make any sense. Um, if it's non-toxic, then there's no imminent danger. If I would have had a refrigerator full of beer, they would have never declared imminent danger. I am a patient that used cannabis to treat my illness and I will no longer be doing that. And I will be blogging and I will be appearing on different shows 
to let everybody see the decline in my health. I'll be providing medical records, um, anything that anybody wants to know, um, with exception what, to which is sealed um, for the sake of my children. Um, but we will not be breaking the law by being a patient any longer because we want our babies back. They know how much cannabis helped me and they're gonna see me get sick, which is gonna be hard for them too. But I have a support network, clearly. And we've been through this round of MS being horrible on me before, which is why cannabis treatment became so important. But um, we just have to get our kids back and get through the criminal proceedings that may follow. And um, from there, we will move forward however it is that we choose um, but right now, we need people to not be scared. We need people to educate people. We need people to tell everybody that cannabis is non-toxic and that children should not be taken from their families and placed into foster care due to cannabis. Um, and the education has to come from all of us. Um, it can't just come from us. But if people start living in fear about this, then they've suppressed us again. And I encourage all of you, do not live in fear. Do not do it. It is painful, it is scary, and you can choose what you do with your fear. There are so many people that tell me that I've been brave, and I feel like I am one of the most scared people on the face of the planet because they have my children. And somebody last night told me it depends on what you do with your fear. If you're going to go out and talk about it and do something about it, or if you're gonna lay down and take it. And I refuse to let people believe that cannabis is a harmful substance that a patient should not be allowed to use in our state. And that's just the way it's gonna be. Um, I'll quit using the cannabis, I've quit using the cannabis. The police have definitely removed all the cannabis from my home. So um, there's no real issue there. Um, CPS is working with us to get the kids back home to us. We are getting visitation. The foster family is not the nightmare foster family that you always picture when you hear of foster care. They care about our children and we know it. Um, and so that's been a little, it's offered a little bit of comfort to know that they're with people that seem to care about them. Um, but we, we need our babies home. We really need our babies home. And nobody deserves this for being sick. Multiple sclerosis is a serious condition that is affected by thousands of people in our country. And it is also the disease that is most commonly recommended cannabis to treat um, because of the muscle spasms and because of all the research. In other countries, we could get something called Sativex, which is a spray that I could have sprayed into my mouth to help my muscle spasms and my pain. But because it has basic organic plant matter, it is not legal in our country for me to have, even though something like Marinol is available to cancer patients, which I will also note is not nearly as effective as the, the actual plant. Um, because there's nothing for me to have pharmacology-wise, except for if you look at the former pharmacopoeia where cannabis was listed, um, I am prepared to become ill. Um, again, some more, and there's really nothing I can do about it. If I want my kids back, I've got to cooperate completely. And so that's what we'll be doing. Um, it's scary and, but it was something that was an isolated incident due to something with our family. This was not due to compassionate Idaho other than if we've been targeted as activists, which we still are looking for and looking at to, to confirm. But um, again, I wanna make sure that all of the Compassion Idaho volunteers and all the people that have signed the petition aren't living in fear. This was something that came into our lives in a way we never expected. Um, using your freedom of speech is important. Using a petition to use your freedom of speech is even more important because that's your voice. Um, you need to be registered to vote, to sign the petition. If you don't wanna see this happen to any more families in our state, if this angers you that children are removed because of a non-toxic substance, join us. Because the more people that get less afraid, the better we're going to have it. We need people to stop being scared and we need people to understand that taking children away from their parents 
because there is a patient that has cannabis in the home is far more detrimental than having cannabis in the home because having cannabis in the home is the only detriment to that is that it's illegal and that's how come my children are gone and um, that's the most harmful part about cannabis is that they can take your kids and we are going to get ours back and we are going to do everything we can to make sure that this doesn't happen to more families but I am asking all of you for help we have legal fees that are piling up very quickly um, putting different lawyers on retainer there's different links up all over the internet to help us with our legal fees that we are incurring um, and we need help with more lawyers pro bono lawyers we need help with um, more signature gatherers compassionate Idaho needs donations so that we can keep running the petition because we do not want to see this happen to any other families it's not right we fought for two and a half years to get medical marijuana laws in this state just to be the victims of the marijuana laws in this state coming back to us is <laughs> it's disconcerting to say the least um, we've worked very hard to protect people from exactly what we're going through and we need your help to help protect other people so if you can donate for our legal fund or you can donate to compassionate idaho to keep the petition running or you can donate your time to get the signatures or whatever you can do to help make sure that this never happens to idaho families call us let us know let us know that you want to help my blog is up go to compassionateidaho.org all of our contact information is there um but really we just don't want to see this happen to anybody else i have been in tremendous pain for a lot of my life. I've been through a lot of physical pain with my multiple sclerosis. And I can assure you there is no pain like having your children taken away from you. There's just no pain like it. I'll take the burning skin over it any day of the week. I want my babies back. That's all I've got right now. If you feel like you can help Lindsay and the Idaho 3 with their case, you can just go to Google and type in Idaho 3. Like she said, there's about seven top ten pages on Google now uh, discussing this case. It's gone all the way to the Daily Mail in the UK. Reason Magazine is covering this. We are bringing a white hot shining spotlight on this case because it is far more harmful for children to break up their families than, than to, for her to use cannabis as her medicine. Another person who was affected by this is Sarah Caldwell. Did you want to speak a little, Sarah? Yeah. So I've got two boys also, a six-year-old who happens to be autistic and an 11-year-old son who is just absolutely wonderful. I did get my children back in their home. The first night they slept with me in the same room. I caught my son packing his toys in grocery bags. I asked him, what are you doing? He said, I'm getting my things together in case the police make me leave again. I don't think any child should have that fear ever. They should not experience being taken from their parents especially under something that is so non-toxic. I may have my children back, and Lindsay and Josh don't have their children back. Lindsay and Josh's children, I love them just as much as I love my own. I'm gonna keep going with this petition. We're gonna keep going to keep it going so that this doesn't happen and we're going to get our boys back. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Also a longtime activist here in the state, uh, the founder of Moms for Marijuana International. We have uh, Sarah Frank here to speak. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming to this and for supporting these guys. Cannabis should not be a crime. We should not be locking people up and stealing people's children for a non-toxic plant.
We need everybody in Idaho to step forward and demand that we make this legal. The Idaho legislator just put out a statement saying that they don't want it legal. They don't agree for any reason, even for these patients, even for our children. I went to their hearing the other day and they put a ton of kids in the room. So these are Idaho's children. We need to protect them. Well, guess what? These are Idaho's children. Those children in foster care are Idaho's children. I am Idaho's child. And without cannabis, I could not be a mom. Without cannabis, she could not be a mom. Are you guys pissed yet? Yeah. This could happen to you. Please come support us. We have the Global Marijuana March coming up this Saturday, 1 p.m. in front of the Art Museum. We're going to march right to here and make our statement. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Roscoe. I'd like to conclude this press conference with some words of my own. My name is Russ Belleville. I'm a third generation Idahoan. Uh, my grandpa moved here from Kansas back in the day after fighting World War II. My mom and dad and brother and family all still live here in Idaho. But I left Idaho 10 years ago. And the reason why is because my ex-wife at the time, she had, was a patient. She needed marijuana. And I didn't want to take the chance that she would end up in a cage just trying to get some relief for, cr for chronic pain. So I've been working in Oregon for 10 years now, working with medical marijuana patients. I've traveled to 17 states, 33 cities over the past five years, meeting people with multiple sclerosis, with Lou Gehrig's disease, with epilepsy, with cancer, with HIV, with Crohn's. I have a friend in England who gained 20 pounds because he's got Crohn's disease in England, he couldn't get any decent medicine. He comes to America, he, he partakes of medical marijuana in Oregon, he's able to put weight back on. This is a medicine that is helping plenty of people. And because of that, I have driven seven hours across Oregon to say one thing to the state of Idaho, shame on you. Yeah. Yeah. Shame on you, Idaho. Yeah. These people are expressing their First Amendment right to petition their government for a redress of grievances and the Boise Police Department thinks that's harmful to their children. Those folks could have had a case of Crown Royal sitting on the table. They could have had loaded weapons in their closet. They could have had, well they do, have pit bulls. <laughs> These kind of things nobody would ever consider being child endangerment, but the mere presence of a non-toxic piece of dead vegetable matter is reason enough to break up a home and the reason I say shame on Idaho is because you in the state of Idaho don't agree with this either in 2011 the Boise State University public policy polling found that 74 percent of Idahoans believe that people with serious medical conditions should be left alone and allowed to legally use cannabis medicine. That's three out of four Idahoans. But in this building, in this building, a majority of the legislature says no, no marijuana legalization, not even if you have multiple sclerosis, not even if your skin's on fire, not even if the trembling and spasticity keeps you awake at night, not even if this puts you in such a deleterious state, you can't even be a mother to your children. Hell no, we're not gonna support it. And Idaho, I don't believe you feel that way. Do you think this woman should be put in a cage? No! Do you think her children should be taken away from her? No! That's hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Hell no. Now we can change this in Idaho. And I know that there's people in Idaho that are afraid they see Oregon and Washington, they see pot parties and rallies, and they worry about the quality of life in Idaho. I understand that. But please understand that the medical marijuana that is being uh, promised here for the state of Idaho is very responsible, very restricted, and would ensure that only the sickest and most disabled Idahoans would be able to take advantage of this medicine and nobody else. Nobody's talking about setting up bong shops on, on State Street. Nobody's talking about having massive pot parties on the lawns. We're talking about a mom 
who just wants to be able to raise her kids. The thing that really blew my mind before I came out here, I do the news for 420radio.org. We are a 24-hour cannabis community radio station. We're on five days a week. So I cover news stories on marijuana every day. And I saw this story come from Middleton, Idaho on last Tuesday. A mom left her three-year-old and her 10-month-old in the car while she went back inside to grab something. Also in the car was a loaded 45. The three-year-old got a hold of the loaded 45 and shot the 10-month-old. Grazed the cheek, the kids are fine. But did that mother lose her children for child endangerment? No. no. Somehow, keeping a loaded 45 in your car with your kids alone is merely an accident. But keeping your medicine in your closet locked up, that's child endangerment? That makes no sense. And this is not limited to Idaho. Just last week, I collected five stories of children aged four and younger who managed to get their hands on a loaded weapon and either shot themselves, another child, or an adult. And in the case of the adult, killed her. Did any of those mothers lose their children for child endangerment? No. Five kids getting their hands on loaded guns in the span of a week. Not one child endangerment charge. But a mom with multiple sclerosis has some dead vegetable matter in her closet. Boy, those kids are in danger. We got to remove them immediately. Does this make sense to you? No. So here's what you do. Get yourself registered to vote. Show up at the march next Saturday. You're not alone. People in 300 cities are doing this same exact march to say it's time to end the stupid war on a plant. There are better ways of dealing with it than locking people up and ruining their families. Show up at the march, register to vote, get involved with CompassionateIdaho.org, sign the petition, make a change, and tell these guys in the legislature they're wrong on medical marijuana. Are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Let's make a change for Idaho. I'd like to come back and visit my family and not be a criminal someday. Thank you. Now, <laughs> we will stay around and answer any questions. Uh, if any press is here or people would like to get photos or talk to us individually, thank you for showing up. We appreciate it.